Good morning. We have just enjoyed another delicious breakfast and have just been put, picked up by Hassam and we are on our way to Alexandria. Let's go. After a three hour car ride, we finally arrived in Alexandria. Which is the second largest city in Egypt. This has evidence of being populated as early on as 2700 BC by the Egyptians. However, it didn't become Alexandria until the time of Alexander the Great. At that time, because Macedonia and Greece were very heavily linked then, this meant that technically Egypt for a fair period of time was actually Greek ruled. After Alexander died, then began the Ptolemaic era, where pretty much every king was called Ptolemy. From that lineage though came the likes of Queen Cleopatra, who obviously is extremely famous, and also there is a lot of Greek influence that you can then come to see around the city. We are starting the day at the catacombs of Qom el Shakafa. I have probably absolutely butchered that name. It was used as a burial ground in the 2nd to 4th century but it was actually rediscovered in 1900 because a donkey fell down an access shaft. Imagine that. It's amazing because it seems like a number of the places that we've actually gone to during our travels were just discovered completely by accident. And this seems to be another one of them. But very, very intrigued because this is very well renowned apparently. So let's go. Seeing the catacombs was so interesting because there's not only human remains that were found, but also animal bones. And apparently it was initially intended for one family, but you can see that so many different people and animals were buried down there. So it obviously just kept expanding over time. And you can see the difference between where more important people were buried because it's far more decorative to where poor people or animals were mummified and buried. All the same though, between each of the different areas where people were being buried, then there must have been so much effort that went in. Every single time that there was going to be somebody that was buried in there, they kept on digging as they went along. It wasn't kind of like a pre-prescribed number of people who were going to be there. And so the effort that must have gone into being able to carve out each niche so that they could then bury the people, it must have just taken ages because it was all so careful as well. Really fascinating stuff. Serapium of Alexandria and what we are stood right next to at the moment is Pompey's Pillar. So the Serapium is actually a temple to the god Serapis. 
So what you just saw there is what's referred to as Pompey's Pillar. After Greek rule over Egypt died out, then it was passed over to the Roman Empire. And actually the column that you see is a triumphal column to the Emperor Diocletian. Now, he was the ruler of the Eastern Roman Empire for a stint. And if you remember our journey in Split, then that was where his palace was. But because he presided over this entire region of the Roman Empire, then he was venerated in multiple other places, including the one just behind us. so far we've explored a few of the seven ancient wonders of the world and if you've seen some of our previous videos you'll definitely know that a lot of those are no longer standing except the pyramids. The reason that I really wanted to come to Alexandria in particular is because actually this is the location of another one that once existed and that was the Pharos aka the Great Lighthouse of Alexandria. This was built in ancient times and apparently the structure was over 100 meters tall and was by far the largest lighthouse in the entire ancient world. Unfortunately though during the Middle Ages there were three different earthquakes which then pretty much completely destroyed the structure and meant it sank completely into the sea. It then got rediscovered and they started to excavate and then they were trying to figure out what exactly to do with some of the stones and well. That plays into where we're standing right now. Some of the stones from the lighthouse of Alexandria have actually been used to build where we are now, which is the citadel of Kite Bay. I have no idea if I'm saying that name correctly, so I really apologize for my pronunciation. The citadel was a 15th century fortress. It was built between 1477 and 1479 by Sultan Kait Bey. I really hope I'm getting that somewhat correct and not being completely offensive. It was used as a defensive fortress until 1882 when the British invaded this area. And it was abandoned after that and now it is used as a museum. So let's go see what it holds.
an amazing day of sightseeing. Hosam has got us some fish from the market, but clearly not just fish. Also rice and salad. And we're gonna be having lunch right here on the beach in Alexandria. just got back to our hotel after a very long day in Alexandria. It is 8.20 at night and we left this morning at 8, I think. Yep. My favorite part of the day was the Citadel and then having that fresh fish lunch by the beach. What was your favorite? Honestly, about the same. Um, I think I was maybe gearing myself up for a bit more of a day filled with ancient stuff, but... I think um, I slowly started to realize once we got there that a lot of the ancient stuff has either been just completely demolished or has been repurposed. So that was a bit of a damper on things as far as I was concerned, but all the same, like the rest of it though was really cool. The Citadel was awesome and again, that fish lunch, seriously, all in all, good day, but long day. Yeah, they seem to have a lot of medieval history, which is stark contrast to obviously Cairo and Giza and everything just as you said because their ancient history has kind of been demolished yeah but I think we should give a huge shout out to our driver Hosam who Definitely. drove us around for the past three days he's been amazing he's kept us safe he has made sure that no one has taken advantage of us or harassed us he's given us all these tips and tricks and also to Ibrahim and his whole family they have been the most hospitable people ever the breakfast is incredible we've had dinner with them two nights in a row they could not be more friendly and welcoming so we've had a really great start to our time in Egypt genuinely for taking us into your home and into your hearts we really really appreciate it but until next time take care and keep smiling